I'm going to show you what it's really like living inside a tiny little micro camper van for a week in the middle of winter in sub freezing conditions. So we've got to make time for my son. He lives 300 miles away. We've got to make time for my partner. And I've still got a full time job to do, along with adding loads of adventures in the progress. Oh, and before I get, my name's Richard. Nice to meet you all. I live inside this micro camper van and this video was brought to you by EcoFlow. It all started on the Thursday night after work. We just finished a 19 hour shift, but that's a joy with me. I only need to work two or three days a week because I work such long hours. I can get a full week's wages in just three days. It was midnight when we finished. We went around the corner and got some fuel and started heading east. We're gonna go and see my son first. It did however mean it was a three hour drive. So it meant that we could get the EcoFlow River 2 on the in-car charger and charge it up zero to 100% in just three hours in the van. After a couple of hours of driving, we arrived at tonight's park for night location, somewhere in a country park around Northamptonshire. We climbed into the back, got all snuggled up under the duvet and thought we'll stick the heating on. We've got an EcoFlow River 2 hooked up to a 650 watt oil filled radiator. It's not the best one, but it's a good one for tonight. We've got a near enough full battery just there and we just have to press AC on and that will come straight on. You can hear the fan start up. That's gonna heat up. As soon as the thermostat gets to whatever it wants to be at, whatever I set it at, then it'll just turn itself off. Although it does say we've only got 38 minutes worth of power for this, it's 650 watt. This should only be taking 300 watts. I don't know what's happening, but it's working for now. It'll only take 15 minutes to heat the van up to what I've set it at. Then it'll turn itself off. Ooh, morning. Now that heater made it a toasty night. Let's take the sheet down and have a look at the weather outside. Ooh. So it's sunny but foggy. Oh, it is a toasty 74 degrees Fahrenheit at the minute. I can guarantee you it's not that outside. With the morning looking more like spring than winter, I wasn't complaining. That sun starting to come up with a beautiful sunrise battering on the windscreen, getting some real heat into the glass. Now, it still stayed below freezing all the time I was here. Woke up to some nice horses neighing, but it still warmed up just a little bit. What a way to wake up. How nice is this little spot? Got a question though. How do I wash Woody? All the salt and grit off the road is starting to uh, discolour him a little bit. He's covered in a load of crap. We're going to go for a walk. There's a big cycle path that runs through here. And we're going to see what we can find. Try and warm up a bit. Get the blood circulated. <clears throat> this is your morning coffee. We woke up with 8% left on the EcoFlow this morning. So we've just plugged in the solar panel just there because the sun's beaming down. Get that on charge while we go for a little walk. Now knowing full well that I actually had the EcoFlow on charge and it was outside the van, I wasn't going to walk too far, walked down a little cycle path, walked about half a mile so I could still see the van, turned around and walked back again, then done that lap a few more times looking at a few of the birds and the frost, it was so beautiful. Let me give you a quick look around our little micro camper van. Keep in mind it only cost £700 to convert this van into a livable camper. So it's not got all the bells and whistles, it's not got anything fancy, but it's perfect for me. I'm hardly ever in the van because I'm always outside enjoying Mother Nature. And this isn't going to be a professional van tour, it's just going to be a little van tour sort of thing. So we've got the bed. It is only a single bed that pulls out into a double bed. I'm lazy as anything, so I just leave it as a double bed. Underneath the bed, we've got storage under there for our boots and our work shoes. And we've got the mirror under there because get this, every single time I open and shut the mirror, it used to go up there, you know, next to these awesome little frog butts, but it keeps falling off and uh, kind of breaking. So that just gets chucked under there if we ever need it. This little drawer under here has just got loads of bits and pieces. We've got our wash kit, we've got our drone, which I'm gutted I can't fly at the moment because you can't fly a drone in under minus degrees. And uh, so that's there. Plus we've got a load of other batteries and GoPro holders and stuff like that. Further underneath it, because this goes right the way down the end of the bed, uh, we've got loads of food and bits and bobs all under there. Along with the wash kit, that gets stored underneath there. That table is foldable, it folds down. We have got loads of storage down here. So we've got a shelf of storage just there, loads of bits and pieces, the Ridge Monkey and bits like that, a dehumidifier. In a small van, you get a lot of humidity and I've got about four of them dotted around. Here's another one, which to be fair, could do with being changed. That'll get done very soon. Underneath there, I've got another load of storage. That storage is more accessible once it is only a single bed. Um, and then underneath that next shelf is all the van essentials, your jack, your tire wrench, air pump, all that sort of stuff. 
in the side door, again, it's all compact. We've got a little 100 watt inverter, which I've actually put inside the van. Uh, I got given it, and it's, I've, I'm going to give it to another friend. That's the Jump Surge IS2000. So that's basically a jump starter pack. If I'm up in a remote location, up in the mountains, there's no cars around, that is going to help me jump start the van if I need to through the winter. Uh, my hiking bag, because I love going on hikes. Uh, kindling, if I want to have a fire of some sort. That's my little fridge. There's virtually never anything inside there. And uh, there's some electrics. We've got some USB ports, a 12 volt, and that's the on off for it. That is powered solely off solar power, which is the solar charge control unit just up there. That charge control unit is ringed up to a 100 watt solar panel on the roof of the van. But for all you solar panel experts, I might need your help. As you can tell, it's charging by 13.8 watts at the minute. That's charging off a 100 watt panel on the roof. Whereas my EcoFlow, down there is 110 watts and that is charging by 23 volts now you'll notice when i first picked it up it said zero my shadow was over the solar panel so that's why it didn't work anyway so the 110 watt charges a lot better than my 100 watt nearly double the amount if i change my cheap chinese mpp solar charge control unit for something like the victron is that going to help get more energy out of my solar panel that's just something that somebody mentioned a while ago and i'm sort of like is there any validity in that? Underneath the bed, you've got this part of the bed that runs the whole length of the bed. Underneath there, underneath that side, we've got like the battery and the electrics. Underneath this side's like a wardrobe. It's got all the clothes and stuff in it. This container thing here, you can access it from underneath the mattress or just fold the bed away. And that's just got loads of extra bits and bobs in it, our little fire pit and stuff like that. On the front of the van, we've got our LED light bar. I love that light bar. And of course, Woody sat up the top there. We go to the toilet in mainly public toilets in tesco's and stuff like that if we so need to we've got other options as well like at work because i still work full time and we shower mainly in the gym this is life for me and i absolutely love it the van is perfect for me however i am looking for a bigger van i can't decide which van to go for but it's going to be within the next couple of months just something for a bit more space it would be extremely handy to actually have a toilet inside the van but I don't know which one to go for. You think, I want to be able to classify it as a, a motor caravan on the logbook. So that just that way I'm insured a bit better. If the need comes, I've got backup sort of thing. But to do that, you've got to have a bed that's 180 centimetres wide. The only van that can do that, where the bed can go sideways at the back, is the Peugeot Boxer, the Citroen Relay and the Fiat Ducato. But they don't really last massively long. They do a lifespan of 150,000 miles, but I do 30,000 miles a year. So that van's only going to last me a few years. Just getting ready to leave this spot and head further east. Look at that, it's minus one degrees. We're about three hours from where I need to be down on the east coast. So it's currently half 10 in the morning. We've got some charge on the EcoFlow. We're going to start making our way down there. I've found a few nice places to park up for the night. However, I want to go check them out first. Because if you haven't already noticed on this channel, if you've not been following it for long, Last time we parked down that end of the country, we had someone try and break in twice in one night. Video in the description. <laughs> we'll put that video in the description if you've not seen it already. But we're gonna go check those little parking spots out, then head down to Little Dude School, go pick him up, and have some sort of an adventure with Little Man before we have to drop him back off at his mum's house. Then we can go and park up for the night, get some cooking done, and enjoy the rest of the evening. All that going for a walk this morning to try and burn some calories and warm up a little bit kind of went to waste a little bit here we had to stop for a mac he's only stopped for a coffee it wasn't long though before we found our first parking spot to have a look at now i love this spot it was quiet there was no signs to say no parking it was right next to the river and some scenery and some wildlife just the way i like it we decided to go for a little walk and just see what was around have a bit of fun see how busy it was and you can always tell a good parking spot by how much litter is around there was absolutely no nothing here nothing at all we picked up little man from school after there went for a little play in the local soft play area what an absolutely amazing time this was. It's amazing how knackering it is jumping around <laughs> in a little play area. Am I the only one that thinks children's soft play areas Psych. are more energetic than the gym? Yeah. Oh. This is tonight's fancy park. Oh, there's the van sat there. It's pitch black. Got a load of boats on the river there. I'll show you more better tomorrow. I've got a full moon loads and loads of stars out tonight hopefully i'll get some good night photography if not it's already minus two degrees <laughs> it's time to get down i have got a new form of heating for tonight to try out boom the electric blanket whoosh 
It's just a cheap one that I got from B&M Bargains for 30 quid. Is it a cheap one? It's a silent night. Information users, we don't need that. Um, now, I've got a couple of uses I can do with this. I can do it just like a normal electric blanket on top of the mattress, or I can create the Duvenator. If you watch YouTube, your van life YouTube, you would have heard of Adventures. If not, I'll stick his link down in the description down below. A heated blanket inside the quilt. I've got it fitted underneath the quilt cover. Let's plug it in. There is nothing on the box that says what wattage it uses. But I know the EcoFlow will tell me what wattage it uses. Whether it will be actually on the EcoFlow or on the app itself. You can see we're at 99%. It's fully charged throughout the day. AC on. Press and hold. I don't know. Should we turn it up to set in 3? And just see what happens. Oh, there we go. So, oh, cool. So it's only using 61 watts worth of power, which is great because that thing was using over 300 watts. I'm going to just lounge around, do a bit of editing. I may try and get out and do a bit more star photography if that moon decides to get further away and stops brightening the whole pictures out. This is good life. I'm loving this. Yeah, sat over there. A massive empty car park. There's some public toilets over there. There's a pub round there which wasn't open last night and it's frozen solid everywhere. Currently minus six. You might be wondering, well, why is the water not frozen? That's brackish water, that's half salt water, it's the river Yar. But look at how lovely that looks. Public toilets outside, I wonder if they're actually open. Oh, open 24 hours. Uh, yeah, let's go and have a look. Hey, that's not bad. That's really clean. I know you probably didn't want to see all that, but hey, look how clean public toilets. Don't need to go to the dirty ones in Tesco's. Woohoo! I do love this van. I love it to pieces. It's absolutely amazing. But I do need a bigger one. Yeah, it must be this is freshwater canal because it's frozen solid, whereas the other side was river because the river's uh, not frozen. That's the brackish water, so that's, it's salt water. So that ain't gonna freeze. But yet yeah, this is frozen solid. Minus two this morning. We had a quick hot water wash inside that public toilet. Now it's time to go head off and pick Little Man up. I may get some breakfast on the way. I'm not too sure yet. After a snowy and foggy drive, half an hour back to pick Little Man up, we decided to go to Africa Alive. It's like a local zoological place thing. There's a few animals. We saw the, t the lions eating. They actually fed the lions while it was like minus stupid degrees. We were the only ones in the whole zoo. It was amazing. We really did enjoy it. But the joy with that is they managed, the staff there managed to sort of let us get a bit more up close and personal with some of the animals just because there was nobody around. Some of the animals were kept in like the giraffes. We got a bit closer with them as well. It was just amazing to see the growth of the baby rhino that they've got there as well. We really did see that. It's suckling on his mummy. Oh! After a load more quality time with my son, it was time to head back north because we had work the next day. Work is an important part of my life. We need to do it. We parked up in a local spot, got the solar panel out to charge the EcoFlow. Uh, then we drove to work, charging it from the in-car charger that gave us a little bit of charge but it was time to head off to work via decathlon i needed to pick some bits up for tonight's epic adventure i actually went in there for an ice pick but i didn't have what i wanted i still ended up spending 35 quid on some ski socks because we're going to need them for tonight's adventures some more warm gloves and another gas bottle but the question is is tonight's adventure doable without an ice pick i think it is just got into work for a day shift let me tell you why i love this job and why i always get in 45 minutes early number one the ecoflow charges up the quickest when it's plugged into a wall look at that knit 300 volts uh, what's that's charging by it's going to take 47 minutes to fully charge it so i'll plug that in i've got all the plugs so i can iron my uniform i've got a shower and toilet facility so i can use all that and i've got a wash after a thousand mile look at the state of the van Let's clean it to that. How cool is that? Nice and clean. We have a social media policy within this company saying that I can't share anything on social media to do with the company. So that's why you never hear much about my job. You just know that I'm a coach driver because that's what I do. Today's shift is just a bit of overtime. I'm saving up money so that I can get a bigger van. That's the ultimate dream. Hopefully they do January sales for vans. How cool would that be? Because that's when I'm looking at doing it. Either way, tonight's job, only a small one, nine hours, Liverpool to Leeds and back, sorted. Then I get to go on my adventure.
with working all the extra hours of overtime that I'm doing, plus growing this YouTube channel, I shouldn't be too long before I'll be able to get a bigger van. A van where my son will be able to come on adventures with me, a van where my partner will be able to come out and about with me. It's just going to be absolutely amazing. If you want to help, just hit that subscribe button, like, and leave a random comment. That's how you'll do it. In one of my previous videos, I asked people to leave random comments, and they really were random as anything. Some of them really funny. Get creative with your comments. I can't wait to read them. Yeah, she looks good now. She's all clean. Let's have a look and see how the eco flow is doing. It's only been on for about half an hour. Uh, press the button. Oh, look at that. 99% done. I had a look on the app while I was sat there working away. But it's time to get that in the van. Head off out to work. I love this job. I literally travel for a job, and I travel while I'm in the van. I live my life a mile at a time, and it's absolutely amazing. So while I am out at work, but before I go on a massive adventure tonight, let me tell you about the EcoFlow River 2. It's the best portable power station under one kilowatt hour. It's the first portable power station in the industry to receive the Tuv Raylands Reliable Charger Certificate, meeting the highest standards and safety and quality. It has the safest LFP battery, meaning you can cycle this 3,000 times. That's almost six times longer than most other portable power stations on the market, and it comes with a five-year warranty with a 10-year lifespan. EcoFlow I've put an awful lot of effort into the battery management system on this, the BMS, meaning that this is the safest and securest one that you can get on the market today. This is the EcoFlow River 2. They come up with loads of different options of different wattages. This is 300 watts surge protected to 600 watts on the DC charger. A couple of USB-A sockets there and there, USB-C socket and a cigarette lighter socket there. If you look on the back, you've got your built-in fan there, which is part of the battery management system to keep the temperature down just to make it a bit safer. That's your wall charger socket and that's for your solar panel or your in-car charger. My personal favourite is with this, is I'm quite flighty, so I'll never be in one spot for more than a few hours. So for me to be able to charge this on the solar panel while I am parked up and then finish topping it up in the in-car charger, or I can take it to work, plug it in for a bit and then take it to work in the actual coach and plug it into the cigarette lighter on the coach. There's just multiple ways of quick charging this. On the plug, up to an hour to charge up from zero to 100%. On the solar panel, three to six hours. On the in-car charger, uh, three to five hours, depending on what wattage you can put into that. I do highly recommend it. EcoFlow have extended their biggest promotion ever with up to £450 off the products on their website. It's all linked down in the description. It'll make a great gift for anybody, and it's essential for my winter van life. It might be for you too. I've put other links down there as well from Amazon and stuff like that, so you can browse through and just check them all out. Let's go on an adventure. Well, I finished work, come back to the van, the whole thing's frozen solid. Don't wash your van in the winter. <laughs> it is minus three though, and it's currently 11 o'clock. Uh, so we'll let this thaw out, we'll go get some fuel, go get some food, and then head off on an adventure. After only an hour and a half drives and temperatures reaching as low as minus eight, we parked up for the night, then got three hours sleep. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. It's been a great morning. Slept absolutely amazing. Today is adventure day. Where'd you find me? Up in Snedonia. It's fucking beautiful. Look, look. That's about Elio. I've never seen it like that. It's amazing. Just all further up there. Just what? Yeah. So it's just before sunrise. We started to make our way up Snowden. This is sketchy. If you've ever done the Lamberis path, the tourist path, uh, and you know that big steep screw path at the very start? It's just ice. <laughs> this is awesome. Just look at how beautiful that looks. That's Mot Elio in all of her glory. You look around here, top end of Dinnerwick Quarry, uh, Foal Elio, something along those lines. That one in the distance you can see, that's Egan over on the Ogman Valley. Should get a nice view of that from the top of this little pathway. Oh god, it's tough going. You've got to think a lot more because of the snow and ice. I've got me crampons and I've got all my bits and bobs. But wow. Oh, just look at that. Morning guys. We're at the start of the path, there's the thing, there's the gate to go through. Just didn't they want me to let them through the gate? I don't know. They're out here. Maybe they got through in the night. What do I do? No, no, they're on this side of the gate. I'm not gonna let them through the gate. Wow, wow, winter wonderland. Let's go and start the path. It's not the best path in the world, but it's still a nice path. It's an easy way up. 
Snowden when it's dark and icy. Plus, it's one of the busier routes, so there's more chances of somebody coming up here if I fall and have an accident. Sorry for scaring you, sheepies. You turn a corner and you get a view of the summit that you want to go to all the way in the distance, all the way over there. Look at all that snow. Look at it. Wow. Just like, oh yes. Now, I was going to climb up Crib Got this morning. That's why I wanted the ice axe. <clears throat> I had a few friends going up there. And couldn't find one. These conditions, it's too dangerous. This is absolutely beautiful. This is beautiful. <laughs> but it just keeps going round. Go round, round, baby, round. Look at that. This is amazing. You coming with me there, mate? No? Okay, I'll see you later. Oh, God, the sun's starting to come up over the mountains, but look at it. It's like a baby version of the Alps. It's just amazing. We're at the halfway house, anyway. You can see all the sun rising over Mount Elio. Wow. That's the easy bit done now. All we've got to do is go along this path, up the staircase. That'll take us to about 800 metres over that ridge there all the way up the side over the plateau and then up to the summit all hopefully before those clouds over there and all those clouds over there don't block our view at the minute there's no clouds on the summit but i need this photo for two years i've been trying to get a photo of the summit at or around sunrise in every season I tried four times last year to try and get it in winter every time i got up fogged out rained out freezing fog this looks like it might be the one and i'm hoping so because this is the last one i need wow the mulwins look at them look how beautiful that mountain range looks you can't see it because it's blurred out but still look how beautiful they are look at the staircase now this is where i might have to put my crampons on or my mini spikes it's 150 meter ascent over a quarter of a mile of steep polished rock steps basically it's a killer in, in summer but i don't know what it's going to be like today when it's covered in snow i've only ever done this where the snow has been just above this so it'll be interesting to see if i need to stop and put the spikes on i will after this it'll give us another view over the other side of the mountains which will be quite nice to have a look at i'm curious if there's a cloud inversion over there oh then we go up the steep ridge uh then over the plateau, then up to the summit. This is beautiful. There's the bridge. Oh. So straight through here, you've got the glitters on the other side. Glitter fat, glitter flower. They're casting the Gwent. They're just mountain names if you don't know that. But look at this. Wow. No cloud inversion, but still. And I nearly said a naughty word. Never eat yellow snow. Wow. That, that's just it just takes your breath away that is pure wowness oh snap i uh, just got the big steep path going up there normally this is a scree path and again i've still not got my crampons on these boots are doing great on this packed snow uh, and then all the way up and round the edge this will be fun mm, this bit normally wipes me out because it goes steep slanted and round and it's slanting slanted towards like a cliff edge Ah, it's all fun. With the snow being as compact as it is and as sticky as it is, it wasn't long before we hit the plateau. This is our first shot that we need. You wait till you see this. There's Snowdon with the sun rising over the summit. There's the lakes looking down to the miners and the pig path. There's Crib Gok on the left. Wow. Let's look at all the ice just gathered up on here. <laughs> For them. It's time for the final push up to the summit now, the summit of Iwidva. No longer is this mountain called Snowdon, it's Iwidva. It'll take me a while to get used to calling it that, but with some of the best snow conditions I've ever seen, we summited Iwidva. At 1,085 metres above sea level, this is higher than any point that's in England, and it's the highest point in Wales. It's just pure breathtaking beauty with the summit there either wed in the background the miners in the pig path crib gok you've got mosia bar dark down there what an amazing day this is what i live for this is just next level ah oh, yes what makes it even more better is i got my shot i got me shot me winter oh my winter low sun shot oh yes now i've got to try and think of another goal to do I'll just continue with the two, 214 Wayne, uh, Wayne Wrights. I'm 38 into that list. 
Mm. It's time to get the mini spikes on. I've noticed with the sun beating down on this path, it's got a bit slick. Uh, the snow's just sort of melted slightly and then refrozen as ice. And we've got to descend quite a bit on a slopey path now. So uh, we'll put these on. Better safe than sorry. Last time I wore these spikes, I broke my knee. <laughs> I'll leave that video uh, linked in the description down below. Funnily enough, on this exact same path. Woo! I'm down. I'm back in the van. That was amazing. It's half one. And I shoot around to the local garage. Because if you don't know about me, every time I come to these places and do these adventures, I don't really spend any money. So I like to spend some money locally. I'm going to go get a meal deal, a bit to eat, some tea for tonight. I had in a local garage. Uh, head back to the northwest, go on a date with Miss Indivana Jones. Um, head off somewhere local and park up. Go to work tomorrow, 19 hour shift, and I'm sure you don't want to see all that boring stuff. So I'm going to end the video here. Subscribe!